Good morning and welcome to this edition of Tuesday Tips. Hope you're having a great week and looking forward to the end of the year in the last few of our sessions together on Tuesdays where we take practical pointers from the poetry of God's Word. During the month of December, we've given ourselves to the poetry of the Psalms, particularly the Messianic Psalms. We noticed last week that the Psalms describe both the pre-existent nature of Christ as well as his coming and taking on the form of flesh. However, it's also interesting that the Messianic Psalms describe the atoning death and the resurrection of Christ. As we look at these various Psalms, we will notice that they are both prophetic and poetic. For example, in Psalm 69 and verse 21, which is quoted in Matthew 27 verse 48, the Bible says, They gave me also gall for my food, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. In Psalm 34 and verse 20, He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. And then in John 19, 36, as Jesus was on the cross, For these things came to pass, the scripture might be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. You see, in um, the century before, or the centuries before Christ's death on the cross, the Psalms had already foretold of what would happen in his atoning death. And when Jesus died on the cross, it is true that they offered him gall to drink. They offered him um, a vinegar to drink, that he was in the midst of affliction and punishment, that even in this, they did not break any of his bones. These poetic Psalms, these prophetic Psalms, were proven true. They cause us to extol not only the Christ, but also his word. And concerning his resurrection, the psalmist said in Psalm 16 and verse 10, For thou wilt not leave my soul to Sheol, neither shall thou suffer thy Holy One to see corruption. Psalm 16:10, in its context is quoted in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost. And there the psalmist David is called a prophet. But the greatest of these psalms is probably Psalm 22. Consider with me Psalm 22. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou answered not, and in the night season, and am not silent, but thou art holy. O oh, thou that inhabitest the praise of Israel, our fathers trusted in thee. They trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee, and were delivered. They trusted in thee, and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men, and despised of the people. Psalm 22 and verse 1, of course, is quoted by Jesus on the cross in Matthew 27, verse 46. Consider beginning in verse 7 again. And they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot me out of the lip. They shake the head, saying, Commit thyself unto Jehovah. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, seeing he delighteth in him. But thou art he that took me out of the womb, that didst make me trust when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God, since my mother bare thee. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset round me. They gape upon me with their mouth, as a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all of my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within me. My strength is dried up like a potsherd. My tongue cleaveth to my jaws. Thou hast brought me into the dust of death. While in this section of Scripture David is describing his condition, we also know that it speaks poetically and prophetically of what would take place with Jesus. They scorned him, Psalm 22 and verse 7, even as he committed himself to the one who was able to rescue or deliver his soul. You see, Matthew 27, 39 and Luke 23, 35, both detail these to a fuller extent. Psalm 22, beginning in verse 16. For the dogs have compassed me. A company of evildoers have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I may count all of my bones. In other words, they're not broken. They look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them, and upon my vesture do they cast lots. 
But thou, or be thou not far off, O Jehovah, be thou my succor. Haste thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth. Yea, from the horns of the wild oxen, thou hast answered me. We're no, we notice in Psalm 22, verse 16, that both the, the hands and the feet were pierced. We know that not only did David speak poetically about himself, but also prophetically about Jesus as they pierced his hands and feet on the cross. That same very marks which Thomas was allowed to place his hand into in John chapter 20, that he might declare regarding Jesus, my Lord and my God. We know in Psalm 22 and verse 18 that David poetically talked of them casting lots and yet prophetically spoke of Christ as he prepared himself or was being prepared for the cross. It says, and when they crucified him, his garments, uh, they parted his garments among them, casting lots. Matthew 27, verse 35. Also John 19, verses 23 and 24. Consider Psalm 22. Verses 22 through 31. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the assembly I will praise thee. Ye that fear Jehovah, praise him. All ye the seed of Jacob, glorify him. And stand in awe of him. All ye the seed of Israel. For he hath not despised nor abhorred in the affliction of the afflicted. Neither hath he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto them, he heard. Of thee cometh my praise in the great assembly. I will pay my vows before them that fear thee. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise Jehovah that seek after him. Let your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn unto Jehovah. All the kindreds of the nation shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is Jehovah's, and he is the ruler of the nations. All the fat ones of the earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow before him. Even he that cannot keep his soul alive, a seed shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord of the next generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born, that he hath done it. Psalm 22, 22 is referenced in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 10 through 12. There Jesus is referenced as the one through whom all things and through whom all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the author of salvation perfect through suffering. For he that sanctifieth and they that are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he, that is Jesus, is not ashamed to call them, that is us, brethren, saying, Psalm twenty-two, twenty-two, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will sing thy praise. Psalm 22 describes in great detail the cross of Christ. It describes the life of David in poetic form, but it describes the death of Christ prophetically. And here we look forward, and now you and I, 2,000 years removed from the cross, look backward, and we reflect on the death that Jesus died, that though he was made like unto his brethren, taking on the form of flesh, he died a death in our place. He is not ashamed to call us his brethren. It was this death that he died that he is willing to Offer on our behalf that we might sing his praise because he confesses us as his own. Unfortunately, many people only remember Psalm 22 and verse 1. And yet the rest of the psalm describes the death of Christ and his dependence on Jehovah. And what would happen as a result of the atoning death of Christ. That salvation might be offered to all nations, to all peoples, to all ethnicities, to all languages. You see, it was through Jesus and his death on the cross that the middle wall of partition was broken down, allowing Jew and Gentile to come together in one body. It was through Jesus' death on the cross that salvation from sin was offered to all people who believe, the Jew first, but also to the Greek. That is God's gospel power unto salvation. As we think about our tip for this Tuesday, I want us to remember that the words of, of God are powerful. And as we think about the poetry, remember that contained within the Psalms are many elements of prophecy, calling on us to trust even more deeply in the Word of God. And as we think specifically about the atoning death and resurrection of Christ, 
we know that we rest our hope and salvation there. And just as it was preached in the day of Pentecost with quotations from these psalms, it would be good for us to point people each and every day to the atoning death and to the resurrection of Christ, that they might have the hope of eternal glory as well. Or in the words of Hebrews 2, that they might be called sons of glory, even as you and I. I hope you have a great week.